All right, welcome everybody. Hey, today I was out doing some plein air painting around my uh, local area. Uh, where we were uh, celebrating uh, a Memorial Day today for the um, all of the military in our country of the United States of America, and uh, we're honoring them today. So I thought I'd go out and do some plein air painting. Uh, there's a really cool uh, tank that was a couple towns over from me. I've always seen it as a very young boy when I first moved to this area of New Jersey where I live in the United States. There was a cool tank that was parked in a, in a park area. Uh, and uh, so I always saw that tank there and I thought today I was going to go out and paint it. Uh, so I brought my gear out there and uh, set up and I met some nice people out there. And uh, we had a fun time and I was talking to a woman. Her grandfather actually brought that tank over to that location from a, a local uh, army base that was not too far, maybe an hour or two away from this location that we're that we're looking at here so I just did a real fun abstract type of painting I didn't get into too much details um, and so what I did was I brought it back to the studio I painted most of this out in the field and now we'll just finish up the finishing touches to it and uh, I'll see how I can make it a little bit better because I kind of see a few things I'd like to touch up a little bit to make it look a little more uh, a little better you know it just looks like there's a couple details missing and then other than that it should be fine I left my paints in the palette that's a lot of times if I go out and do any kind of like plein air field painting I always leave the paints in the palette this way I'm kind of picking up the same colors when I get back to the studio and then we're just going to do that here we're going to get our darks some raw umber burnt umber French ultramarine blue sap green so we're going to use the same colors we used out in the field and uh, I'm going to probably do a little bit of a shadow here, like so. And I'm going to try to add a little bit of sidewalk over here. Like this, just to make this look a little bit better. That to me looks better. And then uh, maybe some more cobalt blue here. Maybe just there's a concrete platform that the tank sits on. And uh, we had some bushes over here, some bushes and uh, some tree branches and things back here. So we left that like that, but that's pretty good. So I think everything is looking pretty good. I think just this one area really needed to be touched up, this uh, sidewalk area here. That reads a little bit better right now. Before it kind of looked like it was <clears throat> not really... it looked like the uh, sidewalk was too wide over here. So I slimmed this down a little bit. That looks good. Again, this is just a fun composition, you know, going out into the field doing plein air painting. I hope everyone will go out and do some plein air painting. It's real fun. And you're just out there to have fun, mix some colors up, get some drawing in, you know, do some fun drawing, uh, enjoy the fresh air. <clears throat> you bring out some, uh, I had some coffee with me I brought, a uh, thermos of coffee. Um, <clears throat> I bring my lawn chair. I brought my easel with me. I'm going to cover my gear uh, on maybe in the next couple of weeks. Look for my video. If Don't forget to subscribe down below. You hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, in the next couple of weeks or so, I'm going to create a, a video on my gear that I bring out with me to the field so you can see exactly what I use. My chair that I use, my easel, my paint setup, my backpack. I have everything really organized because I've been doing it for many years now, going out and painting in the field. So you'll see my exact setup and maybe you'll use some of the ideas I, I have with mine. Uh, hopefully you'll find some good information there on that video. But I'll, that's in the upcoming videos. You'll see that coming down the pike soon. And I think this is good though. Our tank painting came out good here. Maybe I noticed there's an area here we can maybe add some more shadow to. I think it looks a little bit light right here. I thought that needed to be a little darker there on the side of the turret of the tank on top. And uh, <clears throat> I thought this might be a little bit darker under here. So I'll go with some more French Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Umber, Raw Umber, maybe a little bit of Burnt Sienna. This might be a little bit wider there on this po portion here. But that looks pretty good. And then over here, I think there was a, a shadow maybe over there. And uh, 
might be a little darker down in this area here. And I added some shadow in over here because this is dark under here, underneath the front of the tank. There is some light maybe over here. But I think that looks pretty good. Maybe we can even add a few, a couple lines over here for our sidewalk. Like that. Okay, I think that's fine. That looks good. We had that blue sky, blue, cerulean blue wash over here, nice straight paint up here. And then we added water to that and scrubbed it out a little bit and made it a lighter wash up here for the sky areas. But we didn't get too fancy with the skies. And again, this is just a field sketch. This is not a finished painting that we're going to be uh, worrying about framing maybe or putting into a show or a gallery or maybe if someone liked it, we could we could have it where we could, we could give it as a gift or put it in a frame for our family members, or maybe I'd like this one, I want to put it up in my studio. I might do that. But the main thing is have fun, get out there, do some sketching out in the field. You always have a fun time when you go out into the field most times, unless there's inclement weather. And um, we will uh, we'll start on another one here. We did two locations. We did a cannon, so let's start our cannon. Okay, this is still on my board here, so we'll peel this off the board. Okay, this is, this was further along. I didn't finish this painting all that much. I think I'm only halfway through, but it, it is pretty good. It's almost finished. Uh, let's, we'll do some more to this too. Okay, I'll retape this down to the board. Okay, so we just put down our tape again. We tape the same spot as we left off in the field, so we have we make sure to put our tape right along that edge of where we had had it taped before, just so it it will uh, match up nice when we go over with our next bit of paint on top of this, our next couple washes here. And again, like I said, these are field paintings. We're not worried about perfection here at all. We just want to kind of get them to a, a place where they look pretty pre-finished and, uh, and then we can frame them again, gift them, we could give them as gifts, frame them, uh, we could put them into uh, a gallery if we want, if you think they're finished enough and they look uh, good. Okay, all right, so what we'll do is we'll take a quick break. I have my brush ready here. Um, we're going to take a quick break, five minutes, just to relax a second or two, and then we'll come back and we'll work on this. And I think we can get this, you know, pretty much completed in 15, 20 minutes. I think we should have what we want to accomplish here. We're going to put in a little darker darks over here in these tree areas, or there's some trees. Uh, we'll put in our American flag here. Um, and I think we'll put a little more detail into this building here. Some more trees on the top here where this building is. And then we'll, uh, we'll be good. So we'll be right back in just a second. Okay, so we're back. Uh, we're getting started again. We just took a little break. Um, just wanted to show the, um, for our first painting we did here, where we did 90% of this out in the field, and then we just finished up a little bit of the finishing um, uh, details here on this uh, tank painting. And this was close by to my house here in New Jersey about maybe uh, only five, 10 minutes drive from where I am. And uh, this was the actual uh, uh, photograph of that location. So you can kind of see the, I'll put the, um, 
see if we can get this on here. So this is the, uh, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit here. So that's the tank there. And it sits up on a concrete pad. And I uh, kind of minimized and did just a little bit of uh, bushes and things behind the tank instead of painting in the fence. There's a fence there behind. So I left that out. Kind of simplified things. And again, just a fun sketch to do out in the field. Get out. We get out there as artists, watercolor artists. As, you, as an artist, you're, you want to once in a while get out there around your local area, maybe do a little bit of painting if you can, you know. It's up to you. Maybe you go out in a group of people, uh, a couple painters you might know in the area. There's clubs usually. Uh, I've been to many local uh, schools in my area uh, after, uh, I guess, uh, continuing educational uh, workshops with watercolors. And uh, so I've, I've studied locally in the local area. Uh, by my house where there's other people studying and I got together at times uh, to paint and so forth with my uh, fellow painters in the area where I live. So that's an option for you too if you want to go out as a group. A lot of local uh, art clubs and things like that have little outings. Everyone goes out together. It's a fun time. You grab some lunch, some dinner, you do some painting outdoors. So it's up to you. You're the artist. You can find some of those local resources if you can too as well to have a lot of fun. And then next here in my own town here where I live uh, in New Jersey, uh, we had a, uh, in Fairlawn, there's a, a really cool uh, cannon, so I'm gonna, uh, that's the painting I started, uh, that was the second painting I did, and what we'll, I'll do is I'll, I'll put the photograph up next now, we're gonna finish this one up now, and I'll put the photograph up here so we can see, and so I, So that's the cannon, and both of these locations did a beautiful job. They always keep these um, military uh, uh, vehicles and this this cannon and the tank. They keep them really. Uh, they have, they do a lot of maintenance to them. They paint them. They oil things. They they really look beautiful. So it was fun just to go out and see them too, and look at them and see how they're made and the way they look in real life. And and now we're gonna. Uh, finish up here. Let's do our last bit of painting. And then I'll just uh, adjust my phone and my camera here. And then I just set my phone across from me so that I have my, what I like to do when I'm out uh, painting outdoors and in the local area or even if I go on vacation, I'll always try to take a, a picture when I'm seated at, uh, at the location where I'm painting from so that this way when I come back to the studio and I want to do touch-ups or if I want to do the painting again and create another painting, I can do that. I have the photograph so it just brings back the uh, memory of the location, the light, the shadows the colors, everything, and then it's really um, very helpful to have that photograph. So always try to remember if you can, you take that quick picture, that quick picture you take uh, of your scene while you're sitting and doing your your uh, painting. This way you have it with you when you come back home and you're in the studio at your place and you can uh, do some touch-ups if you want or you can recreate the same uh, painting again if you like. And so here we're gonna continue with the Canon. I have that done pretty much. It looks good. The shadows are under there. It looks fine. It needs some detail. And again, I was using the same colors that I used on my first painting for the most part. This cannon was more green in color. The uh, tank was a little more darker greenish brown, greenish gold. It kind of had a really cool looking color to it. This one's a little more lighter green. So I was using some of that... Uh, uh, chromium of oxide. It had like that really matte looking matte color like the you know no gloss just a kind of a flat paint. So I had that that I used on location and that looks pretty good. With my paints mixed here now I think um, let me just do some more. 
This is the building behind which I wanted to capture. And there's a little bit of, we can change around our, this here I can put a, a trim on the top of the building and have it look a little darker, just to make it look a little more interesting. Add a little bit of shadow to it. And then this over here. And then up here, maybe a little more blue. Cerulean blue. And this up here is cooler. It's in the distance a little bit more. And there we have our building. I can do maybe a couple windows here. Maybe we'll do a water table. Maybe we'll do a doorway here, maybe. This way. This looks a little more interesting. Sometimes you can put some things in your uh, painting. You know, you can add to it, make it look a little different. It doesn't have to be exact. It's your painting. You can create and design things the way you want. Maybe a window here. So you can create your own. bit of design to things. I'm going very minimal here. I think that's good. We'll, go, we'll do a little bit of green up here. Sap green. A little bit of cerulean blue. A little bit of that brown mixture and raw umber mixture. And maybe we're just going to have a little bit of some trees and some brush, branches and things. That's all. There's lots of trees in this area. So that's why I'm going to put these extra bit of trees on top here, foliage. That could be some clouds back there. And then here again the same thing. I tend to do some kind of lifting up with the uh, stroke, brush strokes like so. And then uh, we're going to have I'll paint around the American flag here. We have and again, we're having fun with this. Some greens. A little bit of cerulean blue over here, maybe. Maybe more shadow type blues over here and greens. I tend to notice that when you're doing watercolors and you're painting large areas, it's good to put darks and lights in there and try to avoid, I mean, I'm thinking to myself, it looks better, I think, if we can get some darks and lights in there, mix it up, and maybe not leave things looking all one uh, tonal value, like when we're painting. So if I add some of these darks in here, like this, it seems to uh, look better. And we have the side of the building over here. We could actually go with some burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, some green, cobalt blue. We could even go in here and do some darker darks. This 
this is the building the shadow side of the building over here so that's why I thought maybe and I think it's over here too the building goes over here and I think that looks better I think just making those darks over here helps it look better. That one uh, block of dark over here didn't look didn't look quite. So I do a couple. Just scratch out a little bit of uh, lights where the uh, bushes are and things there, and then try to blend that in a little. And again, this is just having fun. Here we are having some fun. Splash the some splash some darks on here. Some cobalt blue mixed in with that dark brown and green just makes it look more interesting some splashing go and I think uh, what, what did we want to do next here we just wanted to get in some more of that French ultramarine blue burnt umber burnt sienna maybe a little bit a little bit of green We'll just try to get in these, uh, some details on the rim of the tire here. And if I just do a few small, minimal amount of details here on the tire, it just makes the tire look more uh, realistic a little bit since we are going pretty abstract here with everything. Maybe we can add a little dark underneath here, underneath the... Uh, cannon portion. Add a little dark and then rinse off the brush. I like to rinse off the brush. Rinse the brush off with clean water. Tap off the water with the brush on a tissue. So now it's just a damp brush and now we just go along that darker uh, bit of paint we put on the bottom of this cannon, on the front of this cannon. The, uh, The barrel here so you got the barrel of the cannon and if you add that little bit of dark there underneath and then you sort of blend it with some damp brush and clean water it just kind of makes it look a little more round like that some darker bits there Sometimes adding just a little bit of darker wash, just by a little bit, can give something a little more uh, 
interesting look. And that's what we did here. A little bit more wash right over here and we leave this lighter because the light's kind of catching on this side here a little more on this interior of the uh, shield of the cannon. Maybe, uh, I'm trying to think, there's a little bit of a shadow there. There might be a dark shadow here. Let's do that. Burnt uh, umber, French ultramarine blue, touch of burnt sienna, and I think there's a dark shadow there. I might make that intermittent a little bit, not straight all the way across. Always blot up a little bit like that. There we go. Okay, and now we will. A little shadowing, maybe some cerulean blue. On this, we're doing our flagpole now. We're putting some cerulean blue on the one side. It's like a metal pole, so we're going to have some cool looking metal type. Might be painted white, even too. I think it's white. I'm going to put a little bit of shadow on it anyway, on the left side. Then we're going to go in and use our cadmium red and alizarin crimson. So we'll mix uh, some reds here. We'll do our stripes on our flag here. And I would do these very, very quick. Nice and quick, fast. No fussing around. There we go. And we'll put some blue. And I just add a little bit of... There we go, just to try to make that feel for the stars there. Then we can get some more of that green, sap green, raw umber, sap green. And I'll dry off a little bit of that paint on a tissue. And then I'll just maybe do a couple. A couple of uh, bits of uh, leaves and things just to kind of uh, fill that in a little. So a little bit of uh, and I leave just a few little spots here and there of that white paper but not much here I think it's good the way it looks not too much uh, leaving too many white spots can look kind of spotty or sp splotchy it makes it look on distracting kind of so I try to fill in some of them white bits of paper and I just kind of keep doing it a little bit at a time I leave them there first and then when I'm done and I'm starting to do the final details of the painting then I start filling them in a little and then I just keep looking at it I step back a little bit from my painting maybe four or five feet and then I just see where it looks good where you, a little bit of those highlights look fine but too many doesn't look good and I don't want to cover them all but I leave them there to start with and then I can go in and fill them in and that looks about good there. This here, I think I'm going to go with some more color, some more greens. Sap green, cerulean blue. Maybe pick up some darker darks there just to make it a little bit darker over there. Sometimes too will look good in a painting if you add a little bit of dark here and there around the outer edges of the painting. That will 
take the viewer's eyes and make their their vision. They will look around the painting more and not stay at one location. And that looks good there. Okay, I think that's good too. So I'm glad you joined us here. Again, we had a lot of fun doing our painting outdoors. Try to go outdoors once in a while. Get out there, have fun, enjoy the sunlight, the fresh air. We'll peel off the tape here. We'll see how it looks with the uh, border around it here. The white border always looks good when you tape off your projects. You know, before you're going to paint, you put on your white tape. There we go. I'll move the palette out of the way here. And we'll see if we can get a better look on this here. See how this is like that. Okay, so that's pretty good. I had most of all, I had fun with it. I hope you'll have fun too out there. Set up your lawn chair. You get a sketchbook, you put it in your lap and you do some drawing and painting quick. You work for maybe 20 minutes and then you uh, maybe move to another location. Uh, have fun with it. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.